I'm Eddie Robinson, WeHo TV News. The city of West Hollywood continues to mark the anniversary of the Sunset Strip curfew riots. And as a part of that, we had the opportunity to talk with cultural historian Dominic Priori, author of Riot on the Sunset Strip, Rock and Roll's Last Stand in Hollywood. When the original Trocadero, uh, Ciro's, and Macombo clubs all closed, and the action from those clubs moved out to Las Vegas, Las Vegas said to all the Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin type entertainers, if you want to play the Sands or the Sahara or whatever, your contract says you can't play Los Angeles. So all these clubs were basically empty and not doing very good business. Here comes the Beatles, and here comes a bunch of kids forming bands. Within a year, a lot of solid things were happening. The Birds uh, opened up at Ciro's on March 26th of 1965, and for their encore, they brought with them Bob Dylan. And this was the first time pop music and electrified rock and roll had you know, the social message of the kind of folk music Dylan and, and the like of him was doing. People from Orange County were up there, people from Santa Barbara were there, people from San Bernardino were there. The greater Los Angeles area was a lot more accessible then because the traffic wasn't so bad. This is something we forget in contemporary times. So everybody from this area came to the Sunset Strip. That was their downtown, as Petula Clark sang. The middle 60s was a time when pop music, became sort of a beat generation thing where it was arts. I mean, it was, it was really kind of becoming a level of high art. Between March 26th of 1965 and November of 1966, it was a tremendous scene, but when Andy Warhol brought the Velvet Underground to the trip, there was a lot of crazy stuff going on on stage and the police closed down that show and that began harassment at the teenage nightclubs. A handbill was brought in by a kid who drew it up saying, let's do this demonstration at Pandora's Box. And the owner of the coffee house said, I think this has merit. And before you know it, everybody on the strip knows what's going on. Finally, on the radio, uh, this jockey on KBLA, Humble Harv, says, don't go down to the Sunset Strip tonight because there's going to be a demonstration there. And of course, that means everybody's going. The demonstration lasted um, Saturday, November 12th, Sunday, November 13th. Um, there was thousands of people in the street both of those nights. Then Monday there was like a, a couple of hundred people out on the strip. Tuesday there was maybe a thousand. And then Wednesday it was back to up almost to what the weekend level was. And then Mayor Sam Yorty rolls in and says, I'll take care of you kids. And then I think the following Monday, you know, the opposite was true. He had this thing where they closed all the clubs, the special meeting. The, the thing that actually happened was at 10 o'clock there was a curfew. That's what the police were exploiting, this old blue law from like 1905, actually. And they came in and they started, you know, to just march down the strip and um, to try to take people away for curfew violation. They had, the key incident was there was a soldier in a car that was stuck in the traffic and he got upset and he started bashing some heads. And then so people had to fight back and one thing led to another and then violence came out of it, you know. And uh, then once there was a little bit of violence, the police just went nuts. The strangest thing about the Sunset Strip riots, so to speak, is they spawned the ultimate flowering of what became known as the Summer of Love and eventually Woodstock. This whole thing that then blossomed in San Francisco and then on the East Coast in New York came from the Sunset Strip riots directly, not philosophically, not strange traverse, but one, two, three in order. So you have the Woodstock nation and the Woodstock generation and all that, but really it started here on the Strip. Here from the Sunset Strip, I'm Eddie Robinson, WeHo TV News.